Good evening, friends. I have a great pleasure in inviting you to join us this Sunday evening worship service. Today we observe the fourth Sunday in the Lent. The psalmist says, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my rock and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues the peoples under me. Friends, at the outset, I wish to thank the BD4 class student friends for having conducted the last Sunday worship service for us. It was a great blessing for all of us. Today we are privileged to have the worship led by the MTH2 class student friends. And this evening we also greet Kiyang Lelan Chote, MTH1, who celebrated his birthday on the 9th, and William Charles, the DTH scholar, who celebrated the birthday on the 9th. And on the 10th, Abilon MTH and Reverend Dr. Israel Selvan Ayaham, Professor Emeritus of Gurukul, have celebrated that birthday on the 10th. Also, we have a message of condolence that Ms. Olika, MTH1 student's maternal uncle, has passed away to be with the Lord. For the people who celebrate the birthday, we give our greetings. God bless you. For the bereaved family, we share the bereavement and give our condolences. May God comfort us all. Let us be quiet and be prepared to worship God in spirit and in truth. time to prepare for the one who is and is to be. This is a time to shine a light into the dark corners. This is a time to open our eyes and our hearts. This is a time to make ways of injustice straight and rough places smooth. This is a time to transcend our ways from phobia towards martyria. Come let us worship God in truth and spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, 
we praise and thank you for binding us together once again to witness your love and majesty as a community you are infinite eternal and unchangeable glorious in holiness full of love and compassion abundant in grace and truth your works everywhere praise you and your glory is revealed in jesus christ our savior therefore we praise you blessed and holy trinity one god forever and ever amen, amen. ஒரு 
Through Christ you enable us to overcome evil and death. In him we already taste life and its fullness. You bring us into the fellowship of your church, enriching us with the gift of your spirit. You nourish us with your word and sacraments and with all the means of grace, that together we may grow up to maturity in the likeness of Christ. In joy and sorrow, your presence sustains us. In darkness, you are our light. In troubles and trials, our strength and shield. O oh God, we thank you for all your providence in our life. Amen. Let us all confess our sin. Most merciful God, we come to you seeking your grace and forgiveness. We truly express our remorse for our mortal disasters, both smaller and larger. We confess that many a time we were indifferent to the ways of life that you have opened before us, and our indifference had the effect of contributing to the pain and suffering of our fellow human beings and your creation. Too often we have used your gift for self-gratification and seldom used them as opportunities to care for others. We remain in fear and forget to move forward towards the life of witness. We are always confess that we often remain silent in the midst of conflicting situations. Even though we are endowed and entrusted with ministry of martyria and liberation, we often fail to sustain your spirit of unity and become pillars of divisions. God of compassion, forgive our sins, and by the power of the Spirit, Strengthen us to live and serve as ambassadors of justice, peace, and reconciliation. Amen. Amen. Let us receive assurance of pardon. O oh God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us all affirm our faith together. We affirm our faith in God, the infinite wisdom, power, and love, who has created us in God's own likeness and who continues the work of recreation and reconciliation for the realizations of life for all. We affirm our faith in Jesus the Christ, the Word made flesh, Son of God and Son of Man, the true humanity, the source of our hope, and promise of our deliverance from death and decay to be a new creation. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit, the reminder of the continuing presence and work of God in our life journey and whereby we are kept in perpetual memory of the truth of God acts in Christ. We have found that this faith must lead us toward the realization of the life of the entire creation in terms of truth and love and righteousness and peace in this early pilgrimage until eternity. Amen. The first reading for today's service has taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here ends the reading. This evening, the Bible passage which I am going to read 
is from the book of John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23. John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sin of any, they are retained. Here ends the reading. May God bless us all. Friends, we are on the verge of completing our course. What are the plans are you having after the completion? Yes, that's the fear in me of what to do next. I wanted to ask you too, have you experienced fear in your life? moving outside in public or even stepping out of your homes. That sounds alarming, but still I think we all have experienced it. Then I should ask you, I'll have you or experienced a fear of not being able to breathe. Yeah, I do. Particularly when I have breathing problems, it actually paralyzes me and puts me into a condition of being broken. We all know how and why breath is important for the sustenance of life. Not being able to breathe is one of the most painful and dramatizing part anyone can ever experience. Yes, I think the whole world is under phobia of COVID-19 and we have witnessing millions whose breath stopped when this invisible tiny virus entered into human bodies. And this pandemic locked us inside separated us from bonding relationship with one another. How do you see that this pandemic impacted our churches and missions? Yes, we have experienced such fear in our churches and mission activities. The Christian ministry was all about sharing, caring and gathering, but all of a sudden we were under curfew, quarantine and lockdown. All of us for a while, for a days, for a month, for a year, we are in phobia, confusion, and many of us were distressed and depressed when our own family members were affected with this inhuman virus. What you are saying is right. We do know the negative impact that this pandemic has created. But what do you think about the scripture that we have just read today and how Jesus, our Savior, ministered the disciples? Yes, that's our point. Even at these times of year, God has ministered to us through the scripture. Christ has heard our prayers when we were down and the Holy Spirit has lifted us and given us strength to face the present realities. The text that we read today from the Gospel of John, we see the disciples assembled and huddled behind closed doors fearing the Jews. The disciples feared for life since they were watched by those who were searching to take their lives. Yeah, but in the midst of this, we experienced a powerful act of Jesus, isn't it? Yeah, you are right. In John 20, 22, it says that, And having said this, he breathed upon them. This verse is very unique to John, with no other reference to it appearing in any synoptic gospels. Jesus breathing on them is a life-giving experience to the disciples, empowering them for ministry, anointing them for bigger, higher and greater responsibilities. Yes, we see, we see that there is always a challenge between phobia and martyria. We are really in a position to re-examine being witness in these difficult times where fear has gripped everyone. How can we take this example of Jesus and apply to the context? Yeah, there is always an ongoing conflict between phobia and martyrio, that is witness. Though they have witnessed the power, miracles and authoritative actions of Jesus against all the injustice, illegitimate actions of those who were in power and authority, they struggled to believe the resurrection. They wanted to believe, but it was too good for them to believe. 
because after the death of Jesus, disciples lost their hope and fear of death surrounded them. Because of this fear, they hid themselves from the world. But when the resurrected Jesus appeared to them and they were revitalized and challenged to bear witness for him through the gospel and their actions. Wow, that's quite amazing and imagine how this would have felt for them. And I believe that it is how Jesus enables us as disciples to continue his ministry. Let me take you through the scene. When the resurrected Jesus appeared to his disciples, he comforted them saying, Peace be with you. He showed his wounded palm, which was the symbol to resist fear. After this, Jesus commanded his disciples saying, As God sent me, I am sending you. Not just to proclaim the gospel, but to be real and daring witness for this resurrection, whatever the challenges might be. Yeah. We have always witnessed the breath of God in our lives and ministry. Do you agree it and is it not an ongoing process? Yeah, we read and when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, it would be futile to serve the Lord in any capacity without relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6 reminds us, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Just before Jesus ascended, he showed the power of the coming spirit to the disciples who are the future witness. Yes, as it is mentioned in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the the risen Savior has equipped us for proclaiming the gospel by giving us great peace, great proof, a great purpose and great power through the indwelling Holy Spirit. That message speaks a lot to us. How can we then apply it to our mission and ministry? Our task as a faith community called by Jesus Christ is to preach the gospel, to resist phobia and stand as material for Christ just as the disciples did. I believe the resurrected Christ has given us power to overcome the fear, break the social injustice, to raise the voice for equality and peace for every human being and our environment as well. Yes, I do feel God's breath is not a stagnant water, it's a flowing river and it shuns fear out and makes us bear witness not just in words, but through our actions of resistance. This year we might get to experience the taste of what the first Easter was like. And still in our homes, daring to believe that hope is on the horizon. But after a while, when we understand that God has breathed upon us, we will come out, gathering together, shouting the good news that God brings life even out of fear and death. Yes, God's love has the final say and it's it's not not phobia, phobia, but but maturio. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, let us again claim for ourselves the covenant which God has made with God's people and take the yoke of Christ our Lord and Savior upon us. To take his yoke upon us means that we are content that he appoints us our place and work and that he himself be our reward. Our Lord Jesus Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring appreciation, others bring criticism and opposition. Some are in accordance with our natural inclinations and material interests, others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do these things is given us in Christ our Lord, who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own, Let us give ourselves anew 
to God, trusting in God's promises and relying on God's grace. Our loving and merciful God, since you have called us to Christ our Lord to share in His gracious covenant, we can upon ourselves with joy in the yoke of obedience and for love upon you. Commit ourselves to seek and do your perfect will. We are no longer our own, but yours. Put us to what you will. Set us with whom you will. Put us to doing. Put us to suffering. Let us be employed for you. Always silent for you. Exalted for you. Or brought low for you. Let us be full. Let us be empty. Let us have all things. Let us have nothing. We freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Son and Holy Spirit, you are ours and we are yours. So be it. And let the covenant that we have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. God before us, God beside, God within us abide, God in heaven and in this place, Father we commit to you this day. Thank you.
let us intercede where ignorance self love and insensitivity have fractured life in communities o god of love give our light where injustice and oppression have broken the spirit of peoples o oh god of love give your life where hunger and poverty illness and death have made life an unbearable burden o god of love give your light where suspicion and hatred conflict and war have challenged your goodness o god of love give your light eternal god remove the blindness of the nations and people so that they may walk in the light of love remove the ignorance and stubbornness of nations and people so that they may drink from the fountain of your goodness amen
Let us pray. God, we thank you for binding us together with your presence in this worship. As we have committed to serve humanity, be with us and guide us. Continue to challenge us and inspire us to discern your will. Let your lives be a continuing worship in this world, to witness your love in this world. We ask all this in the name of the one who gives us the courage to stand firm in our commitment. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.